flowers blooming? Uh, what are the ones that come up early? Daffodils. Daffodils. Linda's got some daffodils that popped up. I think we're ready. You want to announce the hymn? Good morning. Good morning. Our opening hymn today is number 385. Good Christian friends rejoice and sing. Let's rise as we're able. Special welcome to our guests and visitors with us on this Lord's Day. We also welcome those streaming online and dialing into our worship. As part of our worship, we turn to God, admit that we have fallen short and need God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us join together in the confession. We confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you, and uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our next hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today.
please join with me in the prayer of the day. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us, and we shall be satisfied. Heal us, and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Before the kids come up, uh, Katie, our youth and family minister, has some announcements. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I just wanted to quick let you know about our Shatek Multi-Church Vacation Bible School we've got going on. Um, this will be held June 23rd through June 27th from 12 to 4 p.m., but it will actually be at the Shatek United Methodist Church. It'll be for um, children who have completed kindergarten through fifth grade. Lunch will be provided, and it's a free event. The only thing we ask is that you um, fill out a registration form per child. Um, these kids will be receiving this downstairs today, so make sure, parents, that you see this in your children's hands. If you don't have it, come find me. Um, if you don't like paper versions, we have a cute little QR code. You can just... Click it on your phone and fill it out online. Um, something else that's super handy is that VBS will coincide with summer school at Roseland Elementary. So if your children are gonna be participating in that, we will have a bus transporting children from Roseland to the Methodist Church. Um, please just remember to look for this in your children's hands after church today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, okay. The kids are already here. I don't have to say, come on down. <laughs> it's so cool. Morning, kids. See what I got here? Little lamb, sheep. Now, this is a little lamb. It's pretty, pretty special to take care of a little lamb like this, isn't it? Let me get over here. Come on up. So if a big bad wolf was coming in and wanted the lamb, what do you think I should do? Call the, call the shepherd. The good shepherd? Oh, you're right on. We didn't even rehearse this. Yeah, if I was a good... Very good, because if I was the good shepherd and that bad wolf came in, I wouldn't let the wolf get the little lamb, would you? No. In fact, I would fight that wolf. Maybe even, if I was a good shepherd, give up my life. That's what Jesus says. I'm the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. And today, remember, Jesus did give up his life for all of us, because we're like sheep, right? Right? And we need a good shepherd. Yeah, and you push that and it sings to you. Can you hear him? Yeah, it's a, that's a nice little. Yeah, that's, that's cool too, man. So, so we're going to sing a song to remember about the good shepherd, how much he loves you, me, and everybody here in, in the world. It goes like this. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he do? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me and you. The Good Shepherd. Let's sing it together. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he do? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me and you. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life for all these kids and everyone in the world. Help us to be willing to share your love in your name. And all God's kids said, Amen. Bless you as you head off to Sunday school.
Thanks to Linda for reading the good word today. Today's first reading is Acts 4, verses 5 through 12. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Today's psalm is the 23rd Psalm. We will read it responsively. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <clears throat> the second reading today is 1 John 3, verses 16 through 24. We know love by this that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and we'll reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. Please stand for the Alleluia verse. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming, and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. 
so there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Good to see our friend Arthur back in church, isn't it? Yeah. We were praying for you, and God heard the prayers and got you back uh, to good health, so we rejoice in that. Faith, hope, and love, these three abide, and the greatest of these is love. love. Yeah, if I could speak in the tongue, tongues of men and angels but don't have love, St. Paul writes, I'm like a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. You know, if I have all prophetic powers and knowledge to even move mountains but don't have love, I gain nothing. And if I offer all my goods to the poor and my body to be sacrificed but have not love, I am nothing. Faith, hope, and love, these abide. The greatest of these is love. And today we hear from uh, John's letter, we know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. Did you catch the second part? We also ought to lay down our lives for one another. How many want to do that? Take on that big bad wolf. That's what love and action is all about. It's giving up what we think is ours for the sake of another. In the New Testament, there's at least three Greek words for love. You probably know them, but I'll, I'll repeat them. Eros, E-R-O-S, the base word for erotic love. What do you think that looks like? Don't tell me. <laughs> Romantic, Cupid, you know, that kind of love. And then there's philos, P-H-I-L-O-S. If you know the city, Philadelphia, that literally means city of brotherly love if it were only true. Because <laughs> if you're a Packer fan at a Philly game, you're not feeling any love, no. <laughs> Maybe the other side. And then the topper is agape, A-G-A-P-E, agape love. That's the Greek word that John uses in talking about Jesus' love, the love we should have for one another, sacrificial. As Paul continues in 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient and kind not seeking its own welfare, but seeking the welfare of another. It's radical stuff. That's why Nicodemus was so impressed by Jesus, this pharisaical leader who carried a manual with hundreds of laws and traditions one had to keep to look good before others and God. But Nicodemus saw Jesus loving people that were unlovable, loving sinners, tax collectors, prostitutes, he was so impressed, he came to Jesus that night to find out about this love. You know what Jesus told him? You got to be born again. It's an otherworldly kind of love. We can't muster it up on our own. It's a gift from the Holy Spirit. Like Martin Luther writes in the Catechism, we cannot by our own strength or reason believe or love. It's, it's a gift from the Holy Spirit. Nicodemus said, you mean i got to climb back in my mother's womb? No, no, no. It's the Holy Spirit that comes from above. And Jesus said, if you parents know how to give your kids bread and fish when they ask for food rather than scorpions or snakes, how much more is your heavenly Father willing to give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Come, Holy Spirit. Fill my heart with love for you and for one another. That's what Jesus is telling us, his last great command. This is my commandment that you love one another so that others might know you are my disciples. 
What attracts people to a church more than anything else? Love, welcoming, sacrificial giving. I was talking with a brother this past week about spiritual influences. We all have them, and we can be them, right? And we're talking about David Wilkerson, if you know the name, wrote the book, The Cross and the Switchblade, based on a small-town pastor who felt the call to go to New York City in the streets and minister to gangsters, drug addicts, prostitutes. Hey, sounds like Jesus, doesn't it? And he tells a story about coming up to this guy named Nicky Cruz, who's still living and preaching the gospel today. But at the time, Nicky was part of a gang, a gang that would do bad stuff, violent stuff. And he pulled a knife out on David Wilkerson, this small-town preacher, who probably realized he was in deeper than he wanted to be. Nicky said, I could cut you up, preacher. Get out of here. You know what Wilkerson said? Nicky, you could cut me up into a thousand pieces. And each one would say, I love you, I love you, I love you. That began a transformation in Nicky Cruz, who probably never heard about somebody loving him. And the rest, they say, is history. Nicky became a preacher also. Now, if I was Wilkerson, do you think I would do that? No, I'd probably look at Nicky and say, your shoelaces are untied, and then I'd run like heck. But thank God for people who are willing to go into those places. When I lived in Minneapolis, sometimes we'd go to the Stillwater prison. You talk about some rough characters that did really bad stuff. And I got to know some of the guys. And to a T, most if not all of them never knew about love from family, from friends, in fact, some of them probably heard from early on, you're not going to amount to anything. You're just, you'll probably end up in prison. What do they call that? Self-fulfilling prophecy. So occasionally, they would listen to me and other ministers that would go to hear about this amazing love God has for each and every one of us, just the way we are. God loves you just the way you are. You're made in God's image. You're redeemed by Jesus' blood. And you're given the gift of his Holy Spirit without a nickel. It's a free gift. That's why we call it amazing grace. And today, once again, Jesus reminds us the best thing we could do for ourselves and one another is to love. And of course, sometimes it's a struggle for us to love ourselves, isn't it? We have our own issues. Maybe we don't think we're capable of being loved or loving. But again, to hear the word from Jesus, I love you just the way you are. I've come that you might have life, abundant, overflowing. I am the resurrection and the life, whoever believes in me. Even if you die, yet shall you live. And so like our Lord, who loved till the bitter end, we pray today that God's Spirit would give us love for God, for one another, and join with Ray Charles. I can't stop loving you. I've made up my mind. I'm going to change the second verse. With the help of Jesus, going to love you all the time. All together, choir. I can't stop loving you. I've made up my mind with the love of Jesus. Gonna love you all the time. Lord, help us grow in love for you and one another so that others might see and believe and join the throng called the church. In your name we pray. Amen. Bob, what's the next song? Well, you don't even have to tell us. It's right up there.
Let's join together in professing our faith in our loving God in the words of the Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you today for sending your son Jesus into the world to be the good shepherd who laid down his life for us and all the world. Help us find ways to lay down our lives for the sake of others, especially the hungry and the poor, those without shelter who live in the cold, the homeless and the refugee. We pray for all those caught up in strife and violence and war and pray for our military and missionaries, Peace Corps workers and police officers first responders, all who risk their lives for the sake of others. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peace today in places like Israel, Ukraine, other parts of the world where there's strife and war. And use us, O oh Lord, in our daily lives to be peacemakers, to fulfill your word. Blessed are the peacemakers. They'll be called children of God. Lord, in your mercy. Forgive us, O oh God, for our faithless fears and doubts, for not being willing to love as you love, and help our church to grow in loving others for your sake. Lord, in your mercy. God of all comfort, we pray for those today who mourn the loss of loved ones, that they be comforted by your spirit, cling to the hope of the resurrection where one day we'll be reunited with those that have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Healing, God, we pray for those we know to be ill and hospitalized today, those facing and recovering from surgeries, undergoing treatments, those who are ill at home. We rejoice in our brother Art's recovery. We continue to pray for Lynn Trowbridge, John Kirshner, Bill Burnap. Pray for Shirley Morley and others we name before you in our prayers today. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we do commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we'll receive our offerings and noisy buckets. Go to help our youth and family ministries. Thank you, Rita. Beautiful. Let's rise to join in the offertory.
Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you've first given us, ourselves in time, our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us in the world, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in the night in which he was betrayed took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. And help us, O Lord, to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. All are welcome to the Lord's table, where you can kneel or stand, receive the elements of the communion. There's gluten-free wafers in the center of the bread tray. There's wine or apple juice in the center of the wine tray. Please be seated. Communion stewards, please come forward.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, for this healing gift of life, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to heal us and forgive us, to strengthen us and keep us in your grace, and at the last, bring us to everlasting life. Lord, bless us and keep us. Make your face shine on us and be gracious to us. Lord, look upon us with your favor and give us your peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sign with me now. I'm a child of God. I am loved by God, and I'm not alone. So we're talking about love today, and you know, Oli and Lena were having some problems with their marriage. So they went to a marriage counselor, sometimes a good thing. And so they got back, and Lena's in the kitchen um, doing dishes, looking out the window, there's Oli brushing the tractor and then kissing the tractor. And Lena yells out the window, Oli, what are you doing? Well, the counselor says, do something romantic to a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a segue to the tractor commercial. We're going to get it right. Next one. Is that it? There it is, see? So that's, that's next Sunday at Dover Lutheran, Bob. We're going to yep. bless the tractor. I'm not going to kiss any tractors, but we'll bless them. You better save that one for next Sunday out at Dover, though. Okay, yeah. good idea, yeah. <laughs> okay, and then uh, any other announcement? We have coffee and treats downstairs. Come and join us. We have adult Bible study down the office wing. And are the kids coming up? I don't. Well, whose birthday is it? Teresa Anderson. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Teresa. Happy birthday to you. And what's this news about Bob retiring? Whoa, give him a hand. Okay, we're going to just... They say four times a charm. Oh, okay. We're going to run through the melody a little bit as the kids come up. Uh, you want to give us the tempo, uh, Rita?
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.